SpaceX is getting ready for at least one more Falcon 9 launch before NASA's Space Launch System Moon rocket makes its debut, which could happen as soon as September. On August 23rd, SpaceX decided to move the mission from its NASA Kennedy Space Center LC-39A pad to Cape Canaveral Air Force Station's LC-40. This is likely because LC-40 is a few more miles away from LC-39B, where NASA's first SLS rocket is getting ready to take off. Welcome to Tecmo. In today's video, we will talk about how SpaceX plans to launch Falcon 9 Starlink before NASA's moon rocket makes its debut. So make sure you watch the video till the end. SpaceX sent 54 more Starlink internet satellites into orbit Saturday night from Cape Canaveral. This was the most weight that a Falcon 9 rocket has ever carried into space. A few days before the launch, SpaceX and T-Mobile announced plans to use a new generation of Starlink spacecraft to connect all cell phones everywhere. At 11.41 p.m. EDT Saturday, the Falcon 9 rocket took off from Space Launch Complex 40 at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station. This was SpaceX's 38th launch of the year. 15 minutes later, the upper stage of the Falcon 9 sent a stack of Starlink Internet satellites into an orbit between 144 and 208 miles above Earth. The launcher tried to put the satellite in an orbit that was tilted 53.2 degrees from the equator. On Saturday night, there were storms and lightning near the launch site, which made the weather iffy. Storms meant that SpaceX couldn't launch at 10.22 p.m., but the weather was better for the second of two possible launch times on Saturday at 11.41 p.m. The Starlink 423 launch took place on Saturday night. It sent 54 Starlink payloads into the same orbit, which is one more than the last few SpaceX missions. SpaceX has tried changing the throttle settings on the engines and making a few other small changes to improve the Falcon 9's ability to lift. Recent Starlink flights with 53 satellites made the most of the rocket's payload performance. These 53 satellites were the heaviest payloads ever sent up by a Falcon 9 rocket. Since each Starlink craft weighs more than a quarter ton, the addition of one more satellite may mean that SpaceX has slightly increased the capacity of the Falcon 9's payload envelope. According to Jesse Anderson, a SpaceX engineer and commentator on the company's launch webcast, the satellites on Saturday night's flight were the heaviest cargo ever sent into space on a SpaceX mission. Anderson said, that the total payload weight of the 54 Starlink satellites was more than 36,800 pounds, or 16.7 metric tons. About 33 hours before NASA is supposed to launch the huge Artemis 1 moon rocket from the nearby Kennedy Space Center, the Starlink 423 mission took off. The Space Launch System rocket is on Pad 39B at Kennedy, which is about 5 miles north of Pad 40 where the Falcon 9 will launch. Musk says that the Starlink V2 network will send out about 2 to 4 megabits of bandwidth that users in a certain area or cell zone will share. Musk said that's enough to let people text, send pictures, make voice calls, and in some cases, stream videos. So far, SpaceX has focused on residential customers for the Starlink network. This is done by pointing a phase array antenna toward the sky to connect a radio with satellites that pass overhead. The FCC recently gave SpaceX permission to offer Starlink service through antenna terminals that can be put on cars, RVs, ships, and airplanes. Now, SpaceX is moving into the market to support cell phone services. Musk said, this won't have the same amount of bandwidth as a Starlink terminal, but it could eventually get rid of places where cell phones can connect. Musk said, This is a pretty hard technical challenge, but we've got it working in the lab, and we're sure it'll work in the field. The satellite has quite a bit of extra hardware, and it also has a lot of software. Seaver talked about how important it is for public safety, emergency responders, and people who live in or travel through rural areas without regular cell phone service to be able to connect 
their phones to satellites. He said that it would be available at no extra cost on Timo's mobile's popular cell phone plants in the continental United States, Hawaii, large parts of Alaska, Puerto Rico, and the waters around the U.S. SpaceX and T-Mobile want to have the Starlink V2 system up and running by the end of 2023 so that beta testing can begin. SpaceX wants to use the Starship rocket to launch Starlink V2 satellites, but it hasn't been to space yet. Musk said that SpaceX is looking at an interim solution to make a smaller version of the Starlink V2 satellite that can fit on a Falcon 9 rocket if the Starship program is delayed longer than expected. For a Falcon 9 launch, the basic Starlink V2 design is too big. With the Starlink 423 mission on Saturday night, SpaceX has now launched 3,162 Starlink internet satellites, including prototypes and test units that are no longer in use. Saturday's launch was SpaceX's 57th mission, and its main goal was to put Starlink internet satellites into orbit. At T-35 minutes, SpaceX's launch team, which was stationed in a launch control center just south of Cape Canaveral Space Force Station, started loading super cold, densified kerosene and liquid oxygen propellants into the 229-foot-tall Falcon 9 vehicle. Helium pressurant also flowed into the rocket in the last half hour of the countdown. In the last seven minutes before liftoff, the Falcon 9's Merlin main engines went through a process called chill down to get them ready for flight. The guidance and range safety system of the Falcon 9 were also set up for launch. After taking off, the Falcon 9 rocket used the 1.7 million pounds of thrust from its nine Merlin engines to move northeast over the Atlantic Ocean. The rocket went faster than the speed of sound in about a minute. Two and a half minutes after liftoff, its nine main engines were turned off. The Falcon 9's upper stage released the booster stage, which then used coal gas control thrusters and extended titanium grid fins to help steer the vehicle back into the atmosphere. The rocket was slowed down by two braking burns so that it could land on the drone ship a shortfall of gravitas about 400 miles away, about eight and a half minutes after liftoff. In SpaceX's stock, the first stage for Saturday's launch is called B-1069. After its first mission, which sent a Dragon cargo ship to the ISS, the booster was damaged. The booster was damaged when it was brought back to Earth on a drone ship on December 21st. This was its second trip to space. The rough landing hurt the rocket's engines and landing legs, which caused the rocket to tilt when it was brought back to Port Canaveral on the drone ship. Because of the damage, SpaceX and NASA had to use a backup Falcon 9 booster in April when they sent four astronauts to the space station. The original plan was for that launch to use B-1069, which has been fixed up with new engines and other parts. During the second stage burn, the Falcon 9's reusable payload fairing was thrown away. A recovery ship was also waiting in the Atlantic to pick up the nose cones two pieces when they landed in the water. On Saturday's mission, the second stage engine of the Falcon 9 shot off just before the first stage engine landed. This sent the Starlink satellites into orbit at T plus 15 minutes and 21 seconds. It was confirmed that the 54 Starlink spacecraft, which were made by SpaceX in Redmond, Washington, broke away from the Falcon 9 rocket. The Starlink payload stack's retention rods came loose, allowing the flat pack satellites fly away from the upper stage of the Falcon 9 in orbit. The 54 spacecraft will unfold their solar panels and go through a series of automated steps to turn on. They will then use ion engines powered by Krypton to move into their operational orbits. The Falcon 9's guidance computer was programmed to send the satellites into an elliptical orbit 53.2 degrees from the equator. The satellites will do the rest of the work to get into a circular orbit 335 miles above Earth using their own engines. For SpaceX's global internet network, the Starlink satellites will fly in one of five shells in space with different tilts. Once the satellites are in their operational orbits, they will go into commercial service and start sending broadband signals to customers. 
customers can buy Starlink service and connect to the network with the ground terminal made by SpaceX. So that's all for today's video. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and if you want to watch more videos like this one, hit the subscribe button and turn on notifications so that you will always be notified.